So I'm joined now by two premier pediatric cardiac surgeons, and I'm thrilled to have Dr. Pedro Del Nido and Dr. Tom Spray. Pedro's from Boston, you're from Philadelphia, so we have the, uh, the heritage of the United States here. <laughs> so let me ask you, you guys are gonna be debating about a child who might have had a mitral valve replacement and now needs a prosthetic valve. How do you go about choosing the prosthetic valve? Pedro? So the, the, two, uh, the two important factors to take into account is, is uh, the quality of life for that child uh, after the prosthesis, and then the other has to be the longevity of the prosthesis. Uh, often in children, because we can't put in an adult size prosthesis to begin with, uh, reoperation is going to be necessary. So that's another thing that has to be taken care of. How long is the prosthesis going to last? Tom, what do you think? I think that the main issue is that reoperation is inevitable whenever you replace a valve in a child. It's a matter of which valve choice you want for the inevitable replacement. The durability of the valves is a critical issue in young children, tissue valves being very poorly durable in the younger children, and that limits your options. Uh, there may be other available options which we'll discuss in a debate today, but the bottom line is you have to choose a valve that will give you the least long-term complications, the lowest risk of reoperation, and the best quality of life. And unfortunately, we just don't have great options for pediatric patients. So, facing that, how do you prepare the parents and the child for that? Because you're real, it's certainly very different than what we face in adult, you know, where we say, well, we're going to get you a valve, hopefully it'll last your lifetime. So how do you prepare the parents and the child for this? I think the main thing is you have to recognize with the parents that this is just a process, that you're going to try to do the thing that you can do to give the best quality of life for the longest period of time, but that it is inevitable you will have to be back doing something else in the future. They have to know that up front. They have to recognize what the potential limitations and advantages are of the various prostheses and then make a decision based on what they think is the optimal for their particular situation. Is that right? I mean, the, the parents, I mean, you have to spend a lot of time with the parents trying oh, to absolutely. get them to really understand what's going yes. on. Yes, and, and, and you can't forget the child. I think, uh, obviously, it's very much age-dependent how much it really can process. But, you know, a 10-year-old, for example, will want to know. They may not say it, but they'll want to know exactly what's going on. So you have to explain it to them in terms that they can relate to. But at the same time, so they know why you're doing this, how they're going to feel better. So they're getting something out of this other than just a lot of pain and a lot of incisions. I, or, you know, it's obvious. I mean, one of the questions to ask is, what's the difference in the valvular disease states in a child versus an adult? So, I mean, obviously, it's size in the space you're working in. But what, how, what are the, what do you see as the, as the major differences when you're? you know, with valve disease in a child and operating on that versus an adult? Well, the, 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 probably the biggest um, issues are more if you're going to do a reconstruction, and that is the, the variability of the pathology is, is huge in comparison to the adult, so you could have a whole number of reasons why the valve could be dysfunctional, and often it's a combination of both regurgitation and stenosis, so for reconstruction, it's a big, it's a big issue. For a replacement, it's less of a concern, but size is the biggest concern. What can you fit into a small child? Um, yeah, I think it's very important to recognize in congenital valve surgery we're almost always dealing with mixed lesions. Right. And it's not much acquired valve disease, it's a congenital abnormality of the valve. So a lot of the reconstructive techniques that are used in adults have some but not major applicability for pediatric patients because we aren't dealing with fairly normal cortic tendinity, we're not dealing with normal leaflets. The leaflets may be very abnormal, thick, and attached to the ventricular wall. It's a very different pathology. Very, extremely different. So, so the, the, the $100,000 question is, what do you need in this field? You've already told me, I think you already told me you need a valve that's going to last and grow and do all. What are your needs in this field? Well, I think probably the single biggest immediate need is some sort of tissue substitute material that will replace, because we, as Tom said, we're always dealing with uh, abnormal leaflets. And so we end up removing or replacing or augmenting these leaflets. And the material that we can use, um, you know, we try to use the child's own material, but mm -hmm. it doesn't last that long. We don't have good material that will function like a leaflet. It's elastic and will last us the child's lifetime. And especially things that can adapt for growth. 
as, as the valve changes over time. That's a major issue. But I agree. I think tissue is probably the biggest issue. And then subsequent to that is uh, valve sizes are relatively limited for pediatric patients. So they're not very good, even mechanical valves, in very small sizes. And so you're sometimes limited in what you can use. And you have to then start using very creative techniques, some of which Dr. Del Nido has suggested, using stent-mounted valves as a sort of temporizing maneuver right. to get a patient big enough so that you can put in a true valve. Is, do you see, is the, is the population that you have to address growing with uh, changes in the population, the demographics in the United States, or is it growing worldwide, in other words, or is it a s sort of a steady number, you know, because in mitral valve repair in adults, we're not, we have an unmet need, but right. what about in, right. in the pediatric well, I think valve surgery? The, the biggest change that's happening is, you know, these children are now becoming adults. Right. So. And they still have the very abnormal um, uh, anatomy of a congenital valve problem. So that's probably the largest growing group. Uh, we don't see, in, the, in the North America, we don't see as much rheumatic disease. Right. And I think in the third world, they're seeing less and less of it as well. Uh, but certainly adult congenital is a very fast growing. But we're also seeing many more children who have valve lesions um, in single ventricle malformations of the heart, for example, that have had repairs, have eventually not responded to repairs, and they need valve replacement. And that's another big group of patients that wouldn't have survived years ago to come to a valve surgery. So there probably is a slightly... So the, the concept of the child who now reaches a, a, an older age and yes. now has needs more surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're constantly trying to repair these valves and prevent valve replacement until we absolutely have no options left. But unfortunately, right. many of them will get to that point. So if a child, if a child is an 11 year old or the parents say, well, tell me doctors, how, how many operations is Johnny going to have to have in his lifetime? What do you tell them? Well, I think you have to be honest with them. You say for sure he's going to have you know, more than one. How many exactly? We don't know because the technology is advancing very rapidly, but it's typically two or three. But also what's happening is our ability to do the reoperations is getting better. It's safer now. We have more, we have more experience. We have more options. And often non-surgical uh, management uh, is becoming very, very uh, important now. For how long those will last, again, is another There's a whole other issue. And then, of course, I, you guys do. Back to the tissue again. Back right. to the tissue. It's back exactly. to the tissue. It's always, right. exactly. it's always about the tissue. You all, you guys do a great job, seriously. And it's a, in, a, in a challenging environment, okay? For the adults, we've got a lot of space. You guys are working in a small space. So thanks very much for joining us. I appreciate it. Tom, thank you very much. Pedro, good to see you again. Thank you.